This is part 30 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the different view engines that are available in ASP.NET MVC. Please watch part 29 before proceeding with this video. Out of the box, ASP.NET offers two view engines, ASPX and Razor. Let's flip to Visual Studio. We've been working with this project MVC demo. If you look at the views that we have got within this employee folder, all of them are Razor views. Now, when we navigate to this URL, notice the URL employee slash index. This is going to invoke index action within employee controller. Notice the last line that we have within this action method, return view. And to that view function, we are only passing the model object. In our case, the model object here is list of employees. We are not specifying the name of the view that we want to use. So by convention, ASP.NET MVC is going to look for a view with the same name as that of this action method in the views folder. So within views we have employee folder and within that we have a view with name index.cshtml. The name of the view here matches with the name of this action method. So by default it's going to make use of that view and it's a razor view. Now let's say instead of using this razor view I want to use an ASPX view. Is it possible to have both razor views and um, ASPX views to live side by side in a given project? Absolutely. In fact, let's go ahead and add an ASPX view. And to do that, I'm going to right click on this action method and select add view from the context menu. Since we already have a view with name index, I'm going to change the name here to list. And then I'm going to choose ASPX as our view engine. And then I'm going to create a strongly typed view against our employee object and the scaffold template is going to be list and we are not going to use any layout or master page so it's unchecked and then we are going to create uh, we are not going to reference any script library so I'm going to uncheck that as well and let's click add this should add an ASPX view notice the extension this ASPX view has got an extension of dot ASPX whereas razor views has the extension of dot CSHTML or dot VB uh, HTML depending on the programming language in our case, we have chosen C Sharp as the programming language, so the extension here for the Razor view is .cshtml. If VB is your programming language, it's going to be .vbhtml. Okay. And another difference between Razor and uh, ASPX views is that um, look at you know this is the HTML code, head, body, and paragraph tag, and this code right here is actually server side code. So to switch between HTML and server side code in ASPX views, we use angle bracket percentage. So that indicates the beginning of the code block, whereas this angle bracket, uh, I mean percentage closing angular bracket, this is going to indicate the end of the code block. Whereas in C sharp, I mean in razor views, we use at symbol to indicate the beginning of a code block. Okay. Notice that in razor views, we don't have uh, you know another at symbol here to indicate the end of the code block. We only indicate the beginning of the code block and Razor Parser is intelligent enough to detect the end of a code block and the beginning of another HTML tag. Okay, But whereas with Razor Views you have to indicate both the beginning as well as the end. Okay, So with Razor Views we have got a lot less number of keystrokes when compared with ASPX Views. Okay, Now let's make a few changes to this uh, ASPX View. First of all, I'm going to set the style attribute on this body tag and set font family to area. And then let's set border for the table. And to differentiate between this razor view and, uh, you know, ASPX view, I'm going to set, you know, within the H2 tag there, this is a razor view. Let's make a similar change within the ASPX view. So within this paragraph tag, let's use an H2 tag and say this is an ASPX view. And notice that we are not making any changes to our controller action method. Since we have not specified the name of the view that we want to use, when I run this, by convention, it's going to make use of, let's actually use the full URL here, let's say employee index. So look at that it's going to use the razor view. 
okay why is that because by convention if you don't specify the name of the view that you want to use it's going to pick up the view which has got the same name as that of the action method here the razor view name matches with the name of the action method so it's going to make use of that view okay so if we want to use you know this aspx view instead of that razor view we have to use a different overloaded version of this view function so if you look at this view function there are several different overloads at the moment we have eight different overloaded versions i'm going to use a version which is going to take the name of the view as well so there is one overloaded version so look at this version it is taking in the name of the view as well it's taking the name as a string and then the model as an object type so I'm going to pass the name of the view here it's going to be list so with this change let's actually run this and see if it's gonna pick up um, the ASPX view so look at that now it's making use of the ASPX view okay so based on this view engines there could be several interview questions as well so let's flip to the slides so one of the common interview questions is that what is the difference between a razor view and an ASPX view it mostly boils down to the syntax otherwise there are no major differences between the two in ASPX view engine the server side script is wrapped between angle bracket percentage whereas in razor we use at symbol personally I prefer using razor views because uh, it's very easy to switch between HTML and code depending on the programming language you have chosen razor views will either have the extension of .cshtml or .pbhtml whereas aspx views will have the extension of .aspx is it possible to have both razor and aspx views in one application absolutely in fact we have seen that practically and is, po is it possible to use third party view engine with asp.net mvc absolutely so at the moment out of the box asp.net uh, supports ASP.NET MVC to supports two view engines which is which are ASPX and Razor it's also possible to plug in third-party view engines there are several of them available and once we do that we can actually see that view engine within this drop-down list when we try to add a view in fact we'll discuss that in detail practically in our next video session on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.